I think without a doubt, sandbox D&D games are the hardest type of D&D campaign to run. At their worst, sandbox campaigns can become boring, uninteresting slogs that really can destroy a D&D group. In this series, we're going to go over how you make and run a sandbox campaign, starting with this video. Before session one, what five things do you need? And of course, no sandbox campaign needs these five things, however, Whenever I've run a successful sandbox campaign, and I count successful as players having fun, lasting for more than six sessions, going to the higher levels of D&D play, it incorporated these five things. So let's start off strong. Number one, create a guiding light for your sandbox campaign. What is your touchstone to keep thematic integrity? This thematic integrity is important for making the world feel real, because when you are creating a sandbox campaign, you're not just dropping the players into an amalgamation of a world, or at least you shouldn't. There needs to be a linking thread. And I would say that this guiding light is very important and mostly overlooked by a lot of the D&D community, because part of the fun in a sandbox is going around in a living, breathing world. And with this guiding light, this thematic touchstone, you're able to create a more grounded space, at least grounded in terms of your own rules for the setting. And a touchstone could be anything. It could be a Game of Thrones-esque campaign. It could be a tone. Maybe it's dark and gritty gothic horror. Maybe it's light, upbeat, and fun. But whatever the case, have something that you can constantly go back to. And don't get hung up on choosing your guiding light for this sandbox campaign. It can be as vague or as specific as you want. Essentially, just understand what genre, mood, or world feel you're trying to achieve. Second thing you need, though, is a starting town. And this is daunting for a lot of new players, but I'm gonna break it down. The starting town doesn't need to be grand. You, in fact, you don't need to make even the rest of the map. Just the starting town is enough for session one. And honestly, the starting town is probably enough for the first two or three sessions, if not more, depending on how much you build it out. And honestly, you don't even need a map of your starting town. You just need five locations. And you want to know what those, yeah, you want to know what those locations are. I'm getting to it. I'm getting to it. Number one, you need a tavern. This is standard fantasy fare. Your players are going to want to go to a tavern. Maybe they meet in a tavern. Maybe they need a place to sleep. Maybe they need contacts or a place to meet up, whatever. Tavern is just your grounding point in any fantasy location. If the players don't know what to do or they don't know where to go or who to talk to, you know what they do? They go to the tavern. So number one, you need the tavern. Two, you're going to need a seat of government or power. Now, the seat of quote unquote government can be anything. It can be a bandit captain's hideout. Maybe it's just this massive throne which a giant sits on. Maybe it's a temple because the ruling government type is a theocracy. It's up to you, but you just need some seat of power so that the party can go and talk to officials or the people in charge if need be. And even if they're not going to go meet those people, having it there grounds the world and it allows you to DM on the fly. If you need them to go somewhere, you need them to talk to someone, you can say, go to the Citadel, that is where blah 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 is. And you know what? For session one, that's good enough. Number three, you need a shop, because the players will probably want to go shopping if they can. So, what's going to be in this shop? Well, maybe a few normal common items, probably one or two magic items from uncommon to rare, rarity. Uh, your players are obviously going to want some magic items, and even if they are out of their current price range, just having them there as a goal is enough, because that will create another plot hook where maybe they weren't sold on doing this quest, but knowing that if they complete the quest, they get this cool magic item, helps and you can weave in more narrative threads from there but the promise of a really cool magic item is usually enough to get the opening session underway if everything else fails number four you need the quest location and what is the quest location well it's whatever you need for the quest if they're going to a house it's going to be the house if they're going to a cave outside the town it's going to be the cave it can be the dungeon if they're going to go explore a dungeon session one. Whatever it is, just make sure you have the quest location 
prepared. And five, the flare. Now what's the flare, you might be asking? Well, it's something that sets your town apart from every other town. What makes this particular location unique? This is going to be the thing that players remember. Remember that town with the cows that had four wings? Remember that town where it was situated on the side of a mountain and you had to ride hover bikes to get across the streets and things like that. Go wild, let your imagination flow. This particular flare, since again, it's your starting location, should be basically your best. If you have a really cool idea for some place, use it here. Ideally, the flare should inspire fantasy and wonder in your players and make them excited to go and explore all the other cool locations you must have lined up. Now, I won't tell your players that you probably haven't made them up yet, but you can sure hint at some, or maybe just throw some nonchalant bullshit out and see if they take the bait and want to keep going on to the next location. And you can add a ton more to your starting town, but those five things are pretty much what you need. Also, and this is a bonus side tip, don't place all of these locations within the bounds of your town. Maybe the shop is three miles away from the town, ran by a reclusive kobold that somehow has lots of magic items. Basically, make your players move around. Don't have everything clustered together in like a hub city like World of Warcraft. Have them spread out, have them explore. Usually this is going to be the quest location that you're going to throw outside the bounds of the town, but try mixing it up a bit. Number three, you need a quest that brings the party together. And that's a very important terminology there, brings the party together. This quest should be about forming the party into a group so that they can continue their sandbox adventures. This quest line does not need to relate to any other quest line or story. In my experience, simply make the most fun quest you can think of for that opening because you have to hook the players. You have to hook the party. Emphasize fun. This is not a narratively driven campaign where you should probably start with the narrative. This is a sandbox. Let it be open and free. The more fun your opening quest is, the more it will make your players ready to play your second session so they can continue having fun. Because honestly, that's the name of the game if you're running a sandbox campaign. Make it fun, make it interesting, and have it in this grounded world with your guiding light. And trust me, if you can stay consistent with that guiding light, have that quest that is fun that brings everyone together and make the world feel real, eventually, it just is going to get serious. Like, in my experience, campaigns that start off super serious turn into joke fests by the end. And campaigns that start off really light and fun and airy, they become the most intense campaigns because in that joking atmosphere, you're going to fall in love with the characters. So, have this quest be a time where the party can fall in love with their characters, fall in love with your world, your setting, and just make it as fun as you can. And also, of course, at the end of the quest, have a reason why the party's gonna stay together. Don't just have this weird thing where everyone looks to each other and goes, hey, we just did good work. Um, do you wanna, I don't know, be an adventuring party now after just one adventure? I mean, sure, you can do that, and your players will probably do that for you if push comes to shove, because again, we're all playing a game together but try to make that as easy as possible. Maybe give them a second plot hook at the end of the quest that allows them to go forward. Maybe a quest giver gives them another thing that they can do together because they were so effective. Be creative, think out of the box, but just give your players a reason to stay together as a party. Number four, a mentor NPC. A key ingredient for many campaigns in a, in a sandbox world is a mentor NPC. This NPC is a touchstone. They can give out quests or information or maybe most importantly, role playing opportunities. They allow you to explore facets of the world because they know a lot of the lore and they can talk to the party and help them and guide them through the sandbox. They are a friend, a mentor, a potential ally in combat, whatever you need them to be. Mentor NPCs also help stop the slog fest that can sometimes happen in a sandbox where the players complete a quest, and then they don't know what to do next. They're kind of spinning their wheels, they have so many things that they might want to do. Downtime forever seems like an option, and so they'll just keep spinning their wheels again and again. They'll go to shops, and before you know it, it's been two or three sessions, and you haven't really done too much. Maybe you've putzed about, but what are you doing? You don't really know, and the players kind of begin to lose interest. 
that's when the mentor NPC comes in, where you feel if your players are going into this cycle where they're just not getting out of the downtime, they're not getting onto the next quest, that's when you can send in the mentor NPC and say, hey, I heard about this thing over here. And the players will say, oh, what a, a quest, something we can do, let's go follow that. Trust me, never fails. Players will latch onto a quest, almost any quest, almost immediately if they've been spinning their wheels for a long time and they just want action. Just trust me, having a mentor NPC in a sandbox campaign that the players can constantly go to for advice or information, quests, etc. is going to save you and your players a lot of time and headaches. And finally, five, and this might be controversial, but you need conditions for ending this campaign. And let me explain this because I think that this is one of the most important things for crafting a sandbox is knowing when to end it. Because it's important to know when the story is done and when you and your players have had enough of this campaign and are ready to move on to the next, it will help crystallize things for you. Else, it can be a slog. And the condition can be as vague or specific as you want for ending the campaign. You just need a condition. Maybe your condition is when the players kill this god with this weapon, the sandbox is over and we know that it's done. Or it can just simply be when the party has found peace, as vague as you want it to be. But by knowing the ending, you're able to give a satisfying conclusion no matter what. If the party comes to you and they say, hey, we're loving the campaign, but we think we're done with these characters, can we wrap it up? You can say, no problem, because I knew when this campaign was going to end. I've been setting up these conditions since the beginning. And now at this point, you've already done 80% of the work. We'll probably rush through the last two or three sessions and then we'll give all these characters a satisfying conclusion. Now, some people in the comments might argue that it's a sandbox campaign. The DM basically has no control over the story, which I like to push back against that a little bit. As a DM in a sandbox campaign, you're curating the adventure. You're curating the quests that are put before the players. You're curating the experience. If the experience begins to go stale, you need to recognize that and you don't want to overstay your welcome in a campaign. Leave the players on the highest note you can with the best memories that you can. And personally, for me and for other DMs that I've helped coach up, I think that this is the key, knowing when it's over. With those five things, you should have everything you need to run your first session of a sandbox campaign. Subscribe because I will be continuing this series and will go in further depth about how to create and run a fantastic sandbox campaign. Until that next time though, check out this video right here and thank you for entering the dungeon.